You're watching Sky News at 9, which means time for our press preview, the first look at what's on the Sunday papers as they arrive. And joining us for those headlines, writer and broadcaster Ollie Mann and royal author and historian Kate Williams. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Or first should I say, hamo? Oh, which is, is the theme that, that, that we're going to see explored. A taste of what the headlines are to there's, come. There's a lot of that going on. Yeah, yeah we've right. got momentous on the front yeah. of the Independent. We shall see how the photojournalists are, are uh, plying their trade in a moment. Uh, there's in a moment. Pictures. Yes, in indeed. In a moment. <laughs> But we might later. Who yeah. knows? On that, on, on that bombshell. Yeah, 14 minutes <laughs> later, we might get them. We can them. imagine. We can imagine. Yeah. I know. It's extraordinary. Some aliens feet, though, popping isn't it? out of a crater. Yeah. yeah. The it trouble is, is it, it, there's not a lot there when you see the pictures. That's <laughs> the sort of rather disappointing but thing. The possibility but... we've actually got there. I mean, it's just so exciting that, I mean, and we can really explore whether or not it is possible even to live on there, whether there once was water. Yeah. And uh, what else they may find in terms of minerals and rocks and all sorts of things. It's a shame uh, we can't bring it back. It's no, well, uh, <laughs> man flight maybe, who knows, in the next uh, coming decades, but certainly not for the moment. They haven't got the, the money to do it. But uh, let's take a look at what the Sunday papers are coming up with in terms of their pictures, because I suspect it is probably Olympic glory all the way. Uh, we're going to start with the Independent. There we are, red, white and blue again on the masthead and is. the greatest, uh, which indeed is the assessment of Lord Coe tonight. Because he's is. spoken to the Press Association, the greatest British athlete, he says, of all time. It was absolutely fantastic Incredible. watching the race, wasn't it? It was just, I, and I'm not into sport, but the, it's just got a natural cliffhanger built into it, hasn't it, that particular sport? And I think so, I think just so inspiring. I mean, you, we just look back. I was in, I've been in America this week, and the coverage in America of our Olympics, they're so thrilled by how it's going, yeah. they're so delighted by Team GB. I mean, if you think about how many, how many gold medals we won in 1996 in Atlanta, it was one. We got one gold medal, and just look at us now. I mean, the success in all these wide sports, not just, there's lots of jokes that in America that the English only like sports in which they sit down. That's uh, riding <laughs> and canoeing and Kayak sailing and, and, yeah. and, and cycling. Yeah. Yeah. But with lots of sports, we do have to stand up as well. I mean, right from the gymnastics, I mean, the po bronze in the yeah. hockey. This I think maybe the, the sprints athletics. we've been a bit weak on but this time so, round, but, you know. Um, and so I think the diving, people are a bit just hoping, obviously, Tom Daly's Tom going to do yes. well tonight, but we haven't done as well in the diving, I think, as some people yeah. expect in the is, swimming. Is the other aspect of this, the, the, the back stories, if we can call it, uh, where the, the individual athletes, uh, they're, they're sort of efforts, their, their, their story of how they came to these places, mm. particularly with Mo Farah, that's what's really engaged people. It's not just you know, the fact that you see this person after four years, you learn what they've gone through to get to and these he positions. No, he, you know, he wasn't born to privilege. I mean, he, just this the hard fight he's had to get here. And really, you can see it on his face that, you know, he, he, he was, he's just so thrilled to win. And I think he's an inspiration, I think, for, the, for so many young people in this country. I just think so many little kids are going to be watching him thinking, I'd like to be doing that in also, 20 years' time. Little kids that look more like him as well. I mean, that's the other thing, isn't it? And, you know... <laughs> We know that, you know, you don't hear this said on the TV, but you know perfectly well that in, you know, pubs in certain parts of the country, people of a certain age are going to be saying, well, he's not really British, is he? He's well, an asylum some, seeker. Some, of the, some comments on newspaper sites saying very similar effect. things, saying exactly but the But actually, thing. you know, we do Shocking have a generation things. of kids that are from yeah. all sorts of ethnic backgrounds, and the fact that he's winning for Britain and can be an inspiration for them is hugely significant. I and think. the fact his, his wife is expecting twins. I know. He was like, there to see it, and he said he's got a medal each for them now, which is a fantastic thought, really, isn't it? she came on with a little girl as well. I mean, you just whole family affair and I think that's what we are we, we, we really remembered I think in the coverage of this Olympics because there have been so many interviews with people's parents yeah you know, has, has it I mean Beth been Treadle's true parents. actually that the whole London Games that there's been a very human element to it it's not just been the outstanding athletic performances but there's been a, a humanity about it Do you know I think those stories have always been there I think to get to that level of achievement mm. you have to as Mo said in his post running interview uh, it's hard graft that's what it is uh, and I think those stories have always been there of people who have really put themselves on the line to get there and that have incredible stories. I think actually what's happened partly is the media's got a bit better at telling them, actually. Yes. Um, because, uh, you know, I mean, look at Chariots of Fire. You know, that's a story that got people very excited, you know, 20, 30 years ago. I think those stories are always there, but now people are looking for them and looking to tell them in a way, partly because some of the sports are a bit more obscure as well. I, and mean, I, th I think also, you know, because they are British athletes, I mean, for a long time when I used to watch sport when I was a little girl, you just used to watch the Americans and the Russians do brilliantly. And there was or the East Germans, exactly, of course, the East Germans, you kind of sit thinking, 
oh, well, maybe there's something within Britain that we can't do sport. And now there are all these very normal British people, these normal British parents, you know, who drive their kids back and forth yeah. to the tracks and to the well, swimming pool and the gym. Well, it's an interesting question to pose. Is it also a more level playing field now that our athletes are competing on a, a clean um, slate, well, you if look you like at how them. many people, how many say Jessica Ennis, her parents aren't athletes. There are, there are people who are, but there are lots of parents, children coming from normal backgrounds. Yeah, but I, I, so I, was just, I was just thinking about the fact of, you know, that when we were competing against East Germans and well, others, there where they were, they were you know, fueled by and, steroids and yes. goodness knows what. Yes. Now, if we are accepting a clean games, it means actually perhaps we are competing on a more level playing field. Well, except we put investment into it as well, don't yeah. we, which is the discussion that's yeah. coming up. So if it's not doping, it is money yeah. that's going into these things. I mean, you know, surely there'd be Caribbean islands that would be doing better if they had investment into sports other than well, running. Well, just look at the Jamaican sprinters, exactly. you know, the case in point. Anyway, let's exactly. take a look at the Observer. That's got another uh, glorious uh, bit of photojournalism, which is Ed McKeever, uh, with his kayak single... Uh, Victory, the gold in Eton Dorney this morning. He's an accountant, apparently. He's very mild-mannered yeah. until he gets his paddle in his hands and then he turns <laughs> into this snarling animal who sort of, you know... <laughs> Well, isn't it quite a few? I mean, the water polo team, a lot of them have very normal jobs. They're teachers, they're accountants, whereas some athletes really are d almost professional in the way mm. they are. So that's, I think, a big, a big difference. I mean, but increasingly, the idea that the games can be amateur, I think, is getting harder and harder because yeah. it's a full-time commitment to get to this kind of level. Indeed. You can't be But if they can show jobs. any kind of, uh, you know, mental achievement like that as well, you know, to pass an accountancy exam, much has been made of Tom Daly and his A-levels as well, uh, I think that's brilliant as well from an inspiration point of view. Many's the time you see a Premiership footballer being interviewed well, and you wish that see they... the application of accountancy and <laughs> kayaking. <laughs> well, apparently this is why North Korea is so excellent at ping pong because um, it's a very, it's a very uh, d desired thing on your CV in North oh, Korea see. to be a ping pong player. So all right. sorts of companies want a good ping pong so player. So it's like here, you know, you, you get to learn golf to play with the chairman of the company. Absolutely. Right? You, you play ping pong play in North ping Korea. Pong and you win, and you win. Um, so they are very Just to pose one question, that there's something I've been sort of touching on whenever we've had this Olympic coverage, uh, Oli, is something maybe you can pass judgment on, and that is the return of photojournalism mm. on many of these papers. I mean, the Times have been doing it particularly well with their wraps, the front and back page, yeah. you know, one image. And is it the newspapers starting to fight back against all the new media that, and, and their sort of uh, immediacy of coverage, but they've, they've really gone for this dramatic image. I've been really surprised by it actually um, because you know in many ways it has been a digital Olympics yeah. you know a lot of controversy in Twitter America about, yeah. uh, about NBC delaying their broadcast in the States oh, because people are finding feed. out things in real time yes, um, yes. so from that point of view you'd think why would people buy a newspaper at all uh, but yeah the stats seem to show that uh, circulation of I think it's the Times uh, and one other broadsheet, I think possibly the Telegraph, are up against the difference that's gone down for the sun because and the stars. both the Times and the Telegraph have been doing these souvenir, so souvenir, editions, the the souvenir editions. Souvenir yeah. editions, big souvenir editions, big moment. Because of course we're never going to see the Olympics here in our lifetime. We're pretty lucky to have got it three times in the in, in, the, in recent years. I mean, we we are we'll never see it again, and, yeah. and it's, not, it's not going to be in Europe for quite a long time as well. So such a thrilling moment, I think, and no wonder the the, the, the photos, the colours. It's it's really a time when. And you're absolutely right. The, the newspaper can go to town and really show what it can do because so we, the, the news is we, we know I, I, the news I already. To, I have to ask you just to to wind back to the launch of the games as a royal historian. What did you make of Her Majesty's appearance with <laughs> 007? Well, you know? you know, I was I knew it was going to be a big 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 moment. I knew she was having a big role. Though I thought she might might do a bit of lighting of the flame. But I, when I saw her coming out of that helicopter and the yeah. unbelievable role she had against Daniel Craig, you know, yeah. good evening, Mr Bond, I thought it was fantastic. And, and the, the whole bit with the corgis, etc. Oh, the corgis, do you, it was Do brilliant. you think that she was persuaded by the two princes that... You know, well, word, word is that it, the idea did come from the palace. It didn't necessarily come from Danny Cohen. He wanted to involve her, and she wanted a big, a big, um, a Danny Boyle, sorry, yeah. a big, a big kind of impression. And I think that it did come from her. And we always know the Queen has a brilliant sense of humour. She's always making jokes, but we never see it in normal yeah. life. She's said she, to be a great mimic, isn't she? She's a great mimic. It's yeah. not just Prince Philip who can tell jokes. Yeah, well, she's hold a on a minute. Joke. Hold on a minute. Oh, yes, yeah, problem. No, well, hold it was on. Hilarious. No, Did it was really I thought it was, it was funny? I thought it was to get the Queen to act for the first time. She Diana's funeral, actress. I think, it's, was fantastic. It's not, it's but not. when she came out and she had a face like thunder, 
in the stadium, considering the momentous event that was happening around her, she didn't look like she was. Oh, she, did. she looked was, slightly humiliated by the whole thing. Shots. I thought. It was Being just honest. a few shots. It was just well, a few shots. I thought it was just brilliant. Bloomers I coming down from ten thousand feet. Exactly. I think she felt a little bit, little bit. And actually, when I've spoken to people of older generations, I thought it was brilliant. Everyone my age thought it was brilliant. But when I've spoken to people of my parents' generation, they all found it a little bit disrespectful, actually, which I found quite interesting. And I think possibly the Queen did feel a little at that moment. You can only read into what the Queen's thinking. You only ever can. I felt she looked a little bit uncomfortable when oh, she came in. Oh, she might just be exhausted by the fact she'd been working, you know, there yeah. all day. And the next morning she was up, that we, you know, we all stayed up late watching the opening ceremony. And next morning she was up there with Boris, w walking around, you know, and Boris was calling oh, her Oh, maybe, maybe that's girl. what did it. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, OK, morning. just a very quick look at the people, just to say that uh, that's uh, a mix there of sport, but also this uh, awful story uh, unfolding in New Addington. We'll take a look at uh, how the papers are covering that. And, of course, all the other front pages as they come in. Stay with us here on Sky News. We're looking through the Sunday papers as they arrive with the front pages. And joining us, Ollie Mann and Kate Williams. Good evening once more. Evening. And I suspect Hello. we're going to have to wait a while for perhaps more reaction to the Olympics. But the, the people is in and they're gone with this uh, awful story about uh, Cheer Sharp uh, and the continuing inquiry. I mean, just to update people, uh, latest uh, from the Met Police uh, was at the post-mortem, which began at 2 this afternoon, has been paused for the evening. Um, no formal cause of death determined and still no formal identification. So her immediate family and all those people in New Addington are still waiting to find out exactly what's been going on. And it's horrendous, but I, the, the focus is on the police now because obviously they can't talk about who did it or who is going or to, who suspected who is suspected to, have, to yeah. have done it for obvious reasons because there's a process going on. So the focus can be on the police and how they manage to not spot the body on the three previous, if it is a body, on the pre three previous occasions they went there. But, I, I mean, mistakes, <laughs> but mistakes happen, that sounds like a really good thing to say. But what I mean is, everyone knows it wasn't the police that killed her. Do you know what I mean? And the, I think the anger and the emotion that's come out of this, yes, but it's there, wrong there to misdirect, there is, it's misdirected there is, there is at the police. There is a problem that it wasn't secured as a crime scene. I mean, that is the problem that members of the public, members of the media, they were all there. But, I mean, there is this question of was the body in there all along? I mean, there, is, there has been the suggestion that it was moved to a next-door neighbour's house, which is why possibly well, someone, yeah, else has, so, so, someone else has been... In, they've got nothing three people confirmed in, about that, but the, but the question arrest. is being asked there, and, and perhaps quite rightly, if there had been an intervention earlier, might it have saved her? At what stage did the death occur? Uh, this is assuming, of course, that this, this is to make body, identification but, yeah. easier. Yeah, well, that's what and, I mean. It's, it's... And ev evidence collecting easier. I mean, you, you know, you, you you think back in, at times before when there have been, you know, there have been bodies in the, there have been there have been bodies in the house, and you know they haven't been discovered, and then the crime scene is so easily, so easily contaminated. Yeah. The, the other aspect of this is, of course, that many reporters were asking some difficult questions of the police and we're actually getting quite a hostile reaction on this. Mm -hmm. And now it turns out that they, perhaps they were quite right to press the police on these issues. Mm. And it brings into focus again the need for good, solid reporting. Difficult questions being asked when perhaps some well, people may think it's not the right place or maybe, time. Maybe. I mean, maybe the constant sort of media attention on that house and what was going on there meant that a lot of police time was being put into PR and how they spin the story for the media and not actually on the investigation. I mean, you could sense, couldn't you, before the body was found, that it was turning into one of those media circus stories where the helicopter was going to be out and you're going to have 24-7 coverage. It's, you know, as a viewer, it's very informative, but I don't think it ever helps the investigation that really, apart from getting the message out that there's a missing person. Yeah, I but I mean, they're also having to, uh, as we can see with these latest pictures today, with the, the various tributes being laid, there's another job for them to do, and that is uh, create these links with, with the local community, and there's a different side of policing being seen there. but. Clearly, as, as the Met have, have actually acknowledged themselves in another statement, they've got to look now at their procedures in terms of these forensic searches and examinations. Yeah, no, I mean, they've apologised, and there's no question, obviously, that a mistake was made. And I, I, I'm not saying anything against that. Clearly, a mistake was made. I'm just saying it's very easy for the press attention now to focus on the police because they can't talk about the specifics of the case when, you know, really the, the horror that's happened here is not the police's fault. Well, I think, I think also the, the big... I mean, what the police are afraid of, of course, is, is being seen as wrongly accusing someone, of wrongly making a witch, and that's what they're terrified yes, well, of. Well, we remember the, the case in Bristol, of course. Yes, when, exactly. When the and and Madeleine yeah. McCann, the, the, the this press is the, the, the leapt to... The Terror of you know of the terror of they if they you know arrested some arrested him immediately because he was the last person to see her alive if they you know secured the house immediately then it would have seen as if there was always yes. a taint over him so this is what they're afraid of but in this case I think they were 
it seems as if they were too cautious because there may have been vital evidence yeah. that could have been destroyed. And we've seen before how, how delicate DNA yeah. can be. Yeah, well, let's, let's take a look at, uh, this is the mm. online edition there of uh, the mail. And again, they're looking at the immediate uh, inquiry at the top, uh, reflecting on the arrest of Christine Sharp. Uh, and then, of course, uh, of Stuart Hazel, seeing that CCTV pictures. But also this other aspect now, uh, human errors is the phrase they used in the failure of this search. Um, and one does wonder, well, you know, what does that actually mean? What did go wrong? Because they had to bring in finally dogs, which would sense de decomposition. It was the dogs, I think, finally, that, that, that caught on to the, the notion that there was a body in there. Yeah. Um, so that's Eric Amon and Neil Basu there who uh, issued that statement. But of course, we'll uh, see what's going to emerge with uh, the uh, post mortem resuming tomorrow and the inquiries uh, continuing as well. Uh, another couple of online editions. Let's take a look at the Telegraph. Uh, well, they're, they're going <laughs> for. Oh, that yes. photo is getting yeah. everywhere, isn't it? I don't know. Is that, is that a look of surprise or delight on, on Mo's face there? Because he, he really did stick to oh, his guns, fantastic. didn't he? It's, it's almost like the sound of the crowd were actually lighting up his eyes at that point as well. I think there's something about it being the Home Olympics that just makes that victory face all the more well, pronounced. Well, every, every it? Olympic event I've been at, I've been to a few, and the, the, the absolute cheers for Team GB when they come out. You sometimes feel yeah. a bit sorry for the smaller teams <laughs> who just don't yeah. get so... These huge roars for the British. I mean, the, you know, it's not going to be the same in Rio for Team GB. You know, we're not many well, of us are going to manage to get there. Well, the beach volleyball might be quite good there, I would have thought. But there uh, was, so. well, <laughs> anyway, so it's just a map cartoon as we head towards the sort of climax of the games we may not have got any olympic tickets but if we <laughs> hurry we can still get a fine for driving in a games lane <laughs> except you can't you can't except, because they're all open they to all open. traffic at the and moment and the transport couldn't be easier i know but, yeah i mean i would so have loved to have had a transport story to whine about there actually just to one. pick up i mean has that surprised the americans that oh, everything's completely. worked that there has been completely. the transport meltdown i mean you think about it actually there's nothing that the british is better at than standing in queues we're fantastic at making yeah. queues and lines and fairness but yes yeah, so we didn't expect it but the americans they can't believe how it's all finished it's all no no corruption and the transport couldn't be couldn't be simpler so so they're very impressed by us and i think across the world you know you look yeah. at the world's press and in south america they're saying you know rio's indeed. got to step up to the market just a, some of our european neighbors aren't quite so keen but indeed so a uh, quick look at the times it's the same photo there mo Sarah, uh, farrah seals incredible double gold they've got that president uh, ryan story as well you've got to love yes. that mitt romney saying the next president of the united states when he means to say He's the very next vice excited. president it is it is a bit worrying isn't it it's, I mean, it is that's a bit gonna, worrying. Online, that is going to be wildfire for weeks it's, it's now. Like, People will be putting that in rap songs. Uh, Gerald and, yeah. Ford falling down the steps. Of <laughs> yeah. the it's that, it's that, that kind of level, isn't it? You viewed his presidency. Exactly. You know? <laughs> this isn't really going to fill them with a sense of awe. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much you indeed so for joining much. us. Uh, sorry about the paucity of front pages, but inevitably I think they're waiting for more Olympic gold to you know adorn what? the... I'm predicting ten happen. more front page pictures of Mo Farah anyway. So and I think well, Tom Daly, what if he takes the pictures? Thank you very much. Don't forget, uh, more front pages coming up in Sky News at 10. But let's update you now.